You guys doing all right? <clears throat> okay. I'm a little, uh, you know, I got to carry a little something this morning, so be patient with me, okay? I got to work this out. I prepared all day yesterday. Aaron took the kids to the pool. I spent hours upon hours laboring in the Word, in front of the computer, in prayer, to get this really nice, polished message. And I was going to tell you guys about how the gospel left Jerusalem and went to the Gentiles and how a promise was fulfilled. I mean, it was going to be this sparkling message, you know. And then the Lord just shifted me like you can't do that. I'm going to give you this one scripture and you got to preach this. And uh, I just want to share that with you. I want to share a little bit about my call and my journey. And I want to talk to you guys about giving yourself fully to God. You know, we're starting a series called Churchy, and I uh, had intentions in this series to talk about, you know, when you think of a churchy person, you think of someone who's, who's religious, who's outwardly religious, who is, um, who's pious, who's maybe judgmental. How many of you guys remember Saturday Night Live, Dana Carvey? Come on, the church lady. Well, isn't that special? You guys, you guys remember, remember Dana Carvey? That was hilarious, right? <laughs> And, um, but you know, when you think of churchy people, you know, you think of that. And, and, and when I think of churchy, that's, that's, that's what I never wanted for Coastal. You know, that, that's, to me, I just, I always wanted Coastal to be down home and authentic. I wanted to be something that, that was real and genuine. And, and the people that were here were, you know, God was really working in their life, you know, and who they said they were, they were, and, and they, we're following God, and, and I wanted that Acts 2 kind of church, you know, where it was like awe and wonder, like, you know, like God was really working in people, and marriages were really being restored, you know. We, we talked about over the years how we never wanted Coastal to be the I'm okay, you're okay church, you know. I'm okay, you okay? Yeah, we're okay, okay, okay. You know, and it's like, bless you, brother. You know, you just like cl clawed your you know, husband's eyeballs out, you know, and you're like, hey, you know. <laughs> We made it. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. You know, and, and, and we just, I just always wanted Coastal to be real, you know, a place that was real and not churchy. And we spent a lot of time teaching on the church and that the church is not a place you go, but it's actually a people that is gathered. That is, it's not an organization, but it's an organism that's living and moving. You know, it's like, it, it's, it's not a business, but it's actually... Um, a body of believers, you know, that's the church, that it's, it's the many-member body of Christ, and we've taught on that over the years, and just this, this authentic, authentic desire to, to see the body of Christ, and to see the Christ in people, you know, and to, and to not look at people with, uh, you know, by their outward appearance, or by their past, but to look at them as God would see them, and, and to see the value that God had placed in them. Paul said, he said, hey, we have this treasure in what? Jars of clay. So sometimes you, if you're churchy, you just look at the jar of clay and you forget that there's a treasure on the inside. And this idea of just really being the church has always been important to us, at least over the last seven or eight years, really intentionally. And I was thinking about how I don't want Coastal to drift from that. I don't want us to drift from that. I want there to be a fear of God in Coastal to where we have a reverence and an honor for God and a love for one another that compels us to be who God has called us to be. That compels us to really walk out with purpose and intentionality the destiny and the plan of God for each one of our families. Do you know that you are, you are, what you do now is setting an example for the generations behind you. Your children are watching your life, everything you do. Stop excusing sin in your life. Stop excusing those little foxes that are spoiling the vine in your life because you're setting a pattern for the generations to come. 
There's got to be an authenticity to our walk. There's got to be a, a, a true desire to honor God with our lives. And anything that's outside of honoring God, that, that we address it with a little passion. You know what I'm saying? That we stop tolerating those things that, that, are, putting, uh, that are causing us to be churchy. Paul said in Romans, he said, to love what is good and to hate what is evil. That's not judgmental and churchy. That's Bible, y'all. <laughs> that I've got to be passionate about walking out my faith with fear and trembling before God. And to continually give myself to God. Continually. I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story today. I was thinking how this would be pertinent because there's so many new faces. So be patient with me today. I'm just going to share my life. And then I want to really teach this one scripture. I'm going to read it and then share a little bit. And then we'll pray and go home. But 1 Corinthians 15 is an awesome passage of scripture. And I'll explain it more at the end. 1558 says this. It says, therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Knowing that in the Lord, your labor is never in vain. Isn't that so good? Father, would you use this one little text to impact us today? Put a fresh call in the house. Challenge us today. Anoint me to preach good news. Anoint every hear, ear to hear truth and truth alone. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm talking about this idea of a calling. You know, I, I received my calling from God when I was young. I grew up in a Pentecostal home in a church very similar to this, praying under the pews, sleeping under the pews at these all-night watch prayer services, these crazy, charismatic, Pentecostal, strict. And I remember from a young age feeling like God had placed his hand on my life. And around 15 or 16, man, I really strayed from God. And I got heavy into alcohol and drugs. And many of you have heard my story of how, you know, I was kicked out of my parents' home and just really embraced the lifestyle of, you know, a party, weed head, doing any kind of drug I could get my hands on from cocaine to shrooms to pills to just whatever I could do to be high. And for many years, that was my story. And then February 13th, 1998, the Lord snatched me out of that lifestyle. I never did one AA meeting, okay? I never, you know, I mean, it was like, literally, it was like a divine deliverance. That's not everybody's story, but that was my story. And I used to smoke Newport cigarettes, and I would tear the back of the pack off, not the front. And I remember after being saved, it was just maybe like two or three cigarettes after that, and I quit smoking cigarettes. And God radically saved me. That was February 13th of 1998. And at that time, I felt this call from God. Just tell you my story. Some of you here have a story like that of God's calling on your life, right? And I, I think about Paul in, in 1 Corinthians 9 where he said, he was talking about preaching the gospel, and he said, a necessity was laid upon me. A necessity to preach the gospel. Paul was compelled to preach the gospel. Remember, remember he talked about how I'm compelled to go. The Spirit told me I'm going to face hardship and trials of many kinds. But the Spirit has told me to go. There's this calling, this effectual calling. And that's what I felt at a young age. Just this like calling to be used by God. And I didn't know what that was at the time. Listen to me. But I remember that time when I didn't have nothing. I mean, I didn't have two nickels to scratch together. I remember telling the Lord, my life is yours. And I didn't have really anything to give him except my potential, which wasn't much. You know what I'm saying? If you looked at me from the outside. But I gave him that. It's like, Lord, my life is yours, and I'm going to follow you. And I remember him speaking to me the night that I gave uh, surrender to him and saying, don't see your friends for 10 days. Because I knew if I went back to those friends, I'd be smoking blunts, drinking 40s, doing drugs, 
All the same stuff. I get sucked right back into that lifestyle. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. When you have to separate yourself, when you have to walk away from some things, when you have to make some hard decisions about the people in your life to say, you know what, for my health and for my good and to really serve God, I've got to make a hard choice here. I've got to give myself fully. I can't manage it. I can't control it. I can't give a little bit. I can't try to do it my way. It's got to be God's way, all or nothing. It's the gospel. Surrender or face eternity without God, right? And I just remember that at a young age, like, man, like God separating me and me like saying my life is yours. And then I became a youth pastor in my home church and, um, and not long after that, I got an opportunity to go to Kentucky to be a part of a church plant. And I was a youth pastor in Kentucky for six years. And then I got an opportunity to come down here to South Florida. And I remember flying in the plane. You know how when you go and fly into Fort Lauderdale, you like go out over the ocean and you come back. Y'all ever flown into Fort Lauderdale? And I remember seeing all those palm trees and I said, yes, Jesus, I will suffer for you. <laughs> I will go, Lord. Where you go, I, where you lead me, I'll go. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yeah, 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 yes. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I grew up in a single wide trailer in South Carolina <laughs> in the armpit of America. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I was like, South Florida, wow, you know? And uh, so I got, a, I got a great position at an awesome church, Trinity Church, and has six of some of the greatest years of my life. I mean, it was just awesome. Working with some of the people I love. I met Erin there. Woo! Erin and I worked together. She was my secretary, and she chased me down. Every day she'd bring me, <laughs> she'd bring me coffee. She'd wear those short dresses, you know. I see, I see you, sister. And, uh, and she, always, <laughs> she always tells a story how she told me, Ron, we've got to be professional. I'm like, you need to be professional. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I got the microphone, so it's my, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> no, no. No. Women should learn in silence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding, okay? <laughs> Please forgive me, babe. <laughs> this might go really south, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, you know, I don't want to be sleeping on the couch, right? So that's what brought me to South Florida. And, and then in 2012, we had this opportunity, and I won't get into all the details, but we had an opportunity to go and look at a church in Tallahassee. It just wasn't for us, but we came back and we told Pastor Peters, said, hey man, you know, this opportunity isn't for us, but we really feel like we want to plant a church. And that started this whole process, and in 2013, we planted Coastal. And I want to tell you guys something about Coastal. Coastal has taken me to the end of myself more times than I can count. And I could literally tell you story after story of God bringing me to the edge of, like, brokenness over seeing the work established, you know? I, I remember when we, we were trying to find a worship leader, and um, I remember one night just having a nervous breakdown about that. Because y'all know I don't need to be leading worship. <laughs> But I remember rolling off the bed, and I could not get close enough to the floor, just crying and saying, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's so dumb now looking back. And Erin came down, and she's like sitting Indian style, rubbing my back, like, Ron, just get up. <laughs> you know, please just get up. It's going to be okay. And just, just really just broken. And I mean, just time after time, you know, being disappointed in people or feeling, you know, just so many things of God bringing me to the end of myself. How many of you know when you give yourself fully, sometimes it's gonna, it, it will cost you, you know what I'm saying? It'll, it'll, it'll bring you those points in your life where all you have is Jesus. Amen. That's all you have is Jesus. It's that call 
It's that call. You know, I was just thinking recently, I was coming, you know, uh, uh, here in the last couple weeks, had a couple of tough days where it just felt like a lot was coming in emotionally, you know. And I remember just saying, Lord, I just want the vision. I just, I want to see sons and daughters. I want to see a spiritual family established. If that's all I got, I'm going to keep giving my life to it. Give yourself fully. And in 20, this is another part of my story, 2017, January 2017, God had been dealing with me about a secret area of my life, a part of my life that I had never told anyone. And I don't know if you've ever been there where you had, a, had secrets and you're like, man, I'm going to take this to my grave. You know, and I'd even kept my wife out of that. And I remember God had been dealing with me and dealing with me. And finally, there came a point where it was like he, you know, it's like, man, this is your opportunity, Ron. And I remember calling Aaron. I left a prayer meeting here. I called Aaron. and I said, I got to tell you something. Don't let me back out of this. And I got home and I walked up the stairs and she was sitting on the bed. And for the first time in my life. I was completely honest. And it was devastating in our marriage. And it was trust broken. It brought so many fears in Aaron. I mean, it was just hell. You know what I'm saying? It was hell. And there were, I had to walk that out. And I remember at times sitting on the bed crying and my body just vibrating. I don't know if you've ever been there, just the stress and the anxiety of all that you're going through and the pressure of your marriage and, you know, just, I mean, it was like I was just, it was like a thousand pounds on top of me. But I had to keep saying yes. I had to keep giving myself fully to God and fully to my wife, fully to my marriage. And whatever she needed, that's what I was going to be. Whatever I, she needed me to do, that's what I was going to do. I had to give up all of my rights. I had to give up all of my, you know, it was like I had to come to the end of myself and give myself fully to see my family continue, to see my ministry. I don't know if you've ever been in a place like that, but I'm just telling you, when it comes to the call of God in our lives, and every person here has a call, it's going to bring you to moments where you have to make hard decisions and you have to give yourself fully to God, to surrender to him and his dealings on your life and say yes, yes, yes. I'm telling you, I'm talking to some of you married folk in here who you said yes a bunch, but you're getting to the end. Of, no, you got to keep saying yes. And fast forward, we went through this hard season. I'm almost finished here. Well, after that, if we started the church, this is kind of a, this is a better, a, a more happy story. Are y'all still with me out there? Are you okay? <laughs> I don't like it when I cry up here. I always feel, you know, kind of weird, you know. Um, after we planted Coastal, um, you know, it was like, man, we, we lived off savings for a while. But in October, 2013 was a crazy year. We planted a church, we started in business, and we had a baby in 2013. It was a crazy year. I always tell people I've been married 14 years and 12 good ones. 2013 was not a good one, y'all. I had a lot of learning to do. But we started our business, and man, in the first three months of our business, I made more money than I ever made in my whole life. Now, it might not be a lot of money to you, but it was a lot of money to me. And, you know, over those next few years, God really blessed what I was doing in business. And I remember coming to a point in 2015, some of you guys remember this, when I was so disappointed in the church, Right? Because the church wasn't going anywhere and the business was going up and to the right. Katie barred the door. You know, we're making great money. I'm having a lot of fun. You know, I'm driving a Mercedes. Come on, anybody ever drove a Mercedes? They're pretty cool. Okay. And I said, I said to myself, dude, I just need to walk away from this church thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, I'll go to Christ Fellowship and be the best head usher they ever had. <laughs> 
You know, like I'll be the man over there. I'll come in late. I'll leave early. I'll lead a couple teams. Boom, boom, boom. I don't have to worry about it. I'll make and, and And you know what? It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And for another time in my life, this was very special to me. Now, some of you understand this. That time in my life, I gave him my life again. But this time, I had something. This time I had something. But I said, no, Lord, my life is still yours. In 2020 or 2019, so you see, I'm just telling you my journey here. You know, got all this, this great season. And in 2019, I don't know what happened. But I made 22% of what I made in 2018. We were having a million at the time. In December of 2019, I sold my garage fridge for 45 bucks to buy diapers <laughs> for my baby. And I didn't know what God was doing. And in 2020, we had the pandemic. Of course, you know, things got better. We had the pandemic. And in 2021, we felt this, we felt this call to Oklahoma. Like, we might go to Oklahoma and, and go there and be a part of the team, and maybe we could, we just want something different, get out, get into the country, and we could sell the house and make some money and go there and live a little simpler. And, and in that year, I'm telling you, I wrestled with God. And it was an Isaac moment for me. You remember how God took Isaac to the top, or Abraham and Isaac to the top of the mountain? And he said, Abraham, you're going to have to sacrifice your dream, but then there was a ram in the bush. It was an Isaac moment for me. And I remember coming to the end of myself and saying, God, my life is yours. I love South Florida. I love coastal. I love my life. I love everything about what I'm doing here. But if you want me to go, I'll go. Of course, he didn't want me to go. Can I get a good amen there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm still glad to be in South Florida. Thank God with all you crazy folks, all you Dolphins fans. My life is yours. My life is yours. A resounding yes of my life is yours. What am I sharing these stories for today? I'm sharing them because I want you to know that there's moments in your life when God is going to ask you to give yourself fully to him. We go through hard things because it's the pressing that brings out the oil of our lives. It's us laying our lives on the altar of sacrifice to God that brings glory to God. Yes. Paul's talking about in this, go to the next slide, he's talking about resurrection realities. He says, he says guys, in a few verses earlier, he says, but if Christ is preached, he's been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection? If there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. But if he has not been raised, then our preaching is useless and in vain. He's arguing with these guys about the resurrection. Some didn't believe that we'd be raised from the dead. Others didn't. He's saying, guys, look, Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. And he's the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep. He's saying, guys, I'm telling you that Christ was the first one to be resurrected. And now all of us will be resurrected with him. And one day we'll stand before God at a holy judgment seat of God. And he'll ask us, what did you do with your life? Did you give your life fully to me and to my work in the earth? It's a resurrection reality. All of us here will stand before God and give an account for our life. He's not going to ask us how much money we made. He's not going to ask us how nice our house was. He's not going to ask us how many vacations we took. He's going to ask us, what did you do for me? What did you do for my kingdom? It's a resurrection reality. Paul laughs because he's, there was a worldly philosophy. He says, hey, some say let's eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. And many times that's the prevailing philosophy that we live with. We just kind of live with this idea of like, hey, you know, if I go to service or if I volunteer, if I do this, if I do that, oh, you know, it's whatever. But let's, let's have a good time. As long as everyone is happy, 
As long as everyone's getting along, as long as we're good, money's flowing, things are good, let's just, you know, it's going to be okay. It's, it's going to be fine. But Paul says, guys, when you die, it's not poof, the candle goes out. When you die, you stand before God. And he says, hey, what did you do with your life? It's a reality. Go to the next slide. Woe to you, you scribes and Pharisees, for you're like a whitewashed tomb. Outwardly you appear beautiful, but within dead people's bones. Outwardly you appear righteous, but within you're full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Guys, this is not what we want for this house. Go one more slide. No, keep going. He says, be steadfast and immovable, settled and confident in the truth, letting nothing shake your faith. What am I saying to you today, guys? Some of you are at the end of your rope. Just like I told you all those stories of me being in the mind. Now's the time to be immovable. Now's the time to be steadfast. Now's the time to give yourself fully. Now's the time to take care of those little foxes that are spoiling the vine. Now's the time to respond to the call of God in your life. Now's the time to give yourself to him with abandon. Now's the time to say, God, my life is yours. I want all that you have for me. I want to be all you called me to be. I want to be pleasing to you. I want to honor you. I want to walk in the fear of the Lord. I don't want to be churchy. I don't want to just have this like, you know, this happy-go-lucky idea. I want to be serious about my call, my, my life with you. I want to walk it out with you. I want to give myself fully to you. Be steadfast. Be immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. This work of the Lord, it's it's about giving yourself to the saints. It's about ministering to the broken, helping the hurting, sharing your faith, making disciples. But it's also about your life before God, your labor before God. It's not just work. It's labor. It's It's the inner man being changed. It's your honor for him by the life that you live. Be steadfast and movable, always abounding, always giving yourself fully to God because he's a rewarder of those. Guys, I want to tell you that he's able to repay you and to reward you for all that you do for him in this life, in the life to come. Give yourself fully to the work of God. This is a call for the church to be the church. This is a call for us to invest ourselves in him. If you stood before the judgment seat of God today and he says, hey, what have you done with your life? Would you be able to say, God, I've given myself fully to you? There's been moments of difficulty, hard times, places where you brought me to a hard decision. Places where I had to give up my rights. Places where I had to keep going forward and say yes, even though it was hard. But when I look back, I haven't stopped giving myself to the work of the Lord. I want to pray over you. Father, right now, I ask you that you begin... to put a call in our hearts, Lord God. Lord, as a church family, as a spiritual family, would you put a call in our hearts? To be steadfast and immovable. To live in a spiritual reality Remind us, Lord God, of your calling on our lives. Remind us of how important it is to be planted in the body of Christ. 
Remind us of how important your word is. Come on, with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to ask you, will you ask the Lord now? Will you ask him and say, God, is there any area of my life that's not surrendered to your word? Is there any area that's not surrendered to your word? Are there places that you've shown me, God? You've shown me where I was wrong and I'm not surrendered. Right there where you ask the Lord, come on, just really ask him to say, God, is there any place that you want me to give you? Come on, you're going to face hard decisions. You're going to face difficult times. But are you going to give yourself fully to honoring God? Are you going to bow down to the challenge? Are you going to say, no, that's too hard. I can't trust you with that, Lord. I can't trust you with that, Lord. And like Ezekiel says, multitudes in the valley of decision. Like Joshua said when he stood up in front of the children of Israel, choose you this day whom you will serve. You're either going to bow down to the flesh and your fears and your own control, or you're going to bow your knee to the Father of heaven and trust him with every area of your life. Father, would you place a call on this house to live authentic believers who do hard things, believers who live what they believe. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I'm sorry, guys. I feel the Lord really dealing with some hearts. I really feel that. I feel the Lord dealing with hearts. There's, there's areas that we're facing that the Lord is saying, just give yourself fully. Surrender. Mm. God, you're able to keep and save. that you're doing in this place. And I just believe that there are those in this house that are stepping up to new heights, new places in you, new levels of surrender, new dimensions of obedience. Those in this house that are going that are making lasting, eternal decisions. Thank you for your work in this place. In Jesus' mighty name, can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Man, I sure love you guys. I do. Sorry if it's a little heavy today. Yeah. But I really pray that you walk this out, a fresh call to give yourself fully. Is anyone here who's not a believer and you say, man, I want to really, I want to give my heart to Christ today. I want to surrender to him. Somebody may be carrying some weight of sin and just say, man, I need to really surrender. If that's you, just lift your hand. The Bible says everybody he called, he called publicly. Is there anybody? Amen. I appreciate that hand, brother. Is there anybody else? Let's just pray. Let's pray over Zach today. Father, 
Father, Zach is a part of this family. And God, you're working in him. And there's a season of shifts. Lord, the incorruptible seed that's been in him for many years is now springing to life. And we pray your hand upon him, Lord, in a fresh way. And thank you, Lord, that you take away all guilt, shame, and regret. And in his place, you bring the hope, the love of God, the strength of God, the peace of God. We know you're working in him and trust your hand at work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, won't you stand up with me? We'll close. Yeah. You want to come with me? I want to share something with you as we close. You know, we don't often, um, you know, make big appeals or anything, and this isn't a real, you know, we're not twist your arm, but but we are facing a, uh, a kind of a an out of budget, large expense. We had the the pump, the well dried up on us, and uh, George, I don't know where, I think George is in here somewhere. He does such a good job, George in the back back there working so hard to get the yard looking good and and we thankful we've had some rain recently but when there's no rain i mean this this the grass like dries up it looks like a wasteland out there so we got to get this new well and it's probably going to cost us maybe 3500 maybe even four thousand dollars um to get a new well and so just presenting that to you guys some of you guys man if you're able to give generously today just towards that just earmark it you know so it's separate from your tithe and I just put well or, you know, water the yard or whatever you want to put on there. And, you know, again, it's not a, we're not twisting anyone's arm, but for some of you who are, had the gift of giving and you're generous and just presenting that need to you, we know God's going to take care of it. And, um, but that's it. And so, hey, let's pray real quick and then we'll get out of here. Father, uh, we love what you're doing at Coastal and every week may be a little different. And this week, um, I certainly believe that you're at work in our midst. And I pray that we would carry something from today, that we would carry a call, a calling, Lord God, a calling unto you, unto Christ. Now, thank you, Lord, as people leave that that is in their heart and they walk it out with faith and for it that they're tremendously blessed. I thank you, Lord, that there are those that are here that are dealing with things. Uh, I pray just your hand to help and to strengthen them. I pray, Lord, that the, just the presence of God would be so at work in each person's life, in each family, in each marriage, Lord God, that, Father, there'd just be a strong presence working. Father, thank you as we leave, we go in the goodness and the mercy of God. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen.